<laughs> Savage, man. All right, what's good? Strathy Boys Podcast, Episode Two. Hey, we're, hey. we're chilling right now at our homie DJ's place, who was our guest today. Smoking marijuana. Smoking marijuana, partaking in illegal activity, but they can't see it, so it's not happening. Oh, what you can't. The see reason we're shit. we're doing the podcast from here today is because DJ is about to have a party. Probably one of his more annual parties because it's been like slim pickings for a and while. And more toned down, I have to say. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. C- compared to what you used to like. Oh, the parties throw, back in the day. Talk man. about the Summer Hill parties. And for those who don't know, Summer Hill is a street in Montreal uh, yeah. where Just a very guy. shitty building stood that he and a friend of ours, uh, Justin Turner, had an apartment in. Shout and, out to Turner. And uh, things got uh, slightly out of hand. To be fair, the reason they got out of hand was because everyone liked each other. So everyone was always together. It's true. Now, <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to chill anymore. Our group of like 300 people are a bare minimum of like 30 people. Yeah. And it's even hard to get like 30 people together. Yeah, Everybody's in like a, a three-person squad now doing their own thing. Do you remember the first party you had on Summer Hill? Because like, I, I don't re- really don't, remember what the first one was. I, might, I, think I remember the last been, one, but I don't remember the first one. I think one. it might have been the... Because uh, we moved in halfway. We moved in in February because I remember getting evicted from my first place in the winter. And Turner got evicted at the same day. So yeah, yeah it was February because it was right after his birthday. Or Yeah. Anyway, I think it was St. Patrick's Day. I think we got oh, drunk yeah, and we had everybody over yeah. St. Patrick's Day on during the day. And then... Turner was stupid and he was just like, everyone come back to our place up for the parade. And like literally randoms came from the parade and they just <sighs> paraded. But I feel like that's how every one of your parties was there. Almost it was open door policy, anything goes. <gasps> I just burned myself. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like that's how you base so many parties and... Yeah. <coughs> Wasn't there one they cut the power? The, the cops had to that cut the power? That was the last power? one. That was the Yeah, the, well, we'll talk about the last one in a bit, but... <laughs> What are some of the memories you can think of, like the highlights of like that fucking that time? Because we were we were still pretty young. We were still, you know, a lot crazier than we are today. One of my highlights was definitely um at the eviction party when I snuck back into the place to bang my ex girlfriend on like <laughs> the mattress in Dan's room, oh and my then God. like. Like I think it was you guys and like Nuke who busted in with a camera to film it while I was like going at it. It's very possible. Jesus. That, that just goes funny. to show you how crazy we used to get. Like we barely remember these I mean, these parties. We had we had what we had a, a construct the DJ yeah. in downtown Montreal. We had him in the in Turner's uh, bedroom because all rooms were like as big as a house. Like there was yeah, no, that place was apartment. pretty big. You had someone spinning. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is there something on fire? No. <laughs> the yeah, smoke went, yeah, there is. No. It's your joint, you fucking <laughs> The smoke stone. went around I know, your I body, thought, I was and like, it looked like smoke was yeah, coming off the back. One, honestly, one of my favorite moments from those days was the time fucking Angela Rose just full-on decked you in the face. That was a hard right one. Right in front of the apartment. Almost she as far as this drink. I thought you put juice in the drink. No, no, it's just, it's just Perry. Oh, bro. my Lord, that just changed my life. Yeah, it's not bad though. Yeah, yeah that was a good shout party. out to Gin and Tonics with Perrier yeah. taking the yeah. healthier route to, to getting fucked up. I don't know if we up. should necessarily. I think we should bleep out names sometimes. Yeah, we can do that but in, in post. Like, <laughs> so she if, knows who she is either way. If you didn't, if you didn't, I just know the name. If we decide was, to bleep it out, it was Angela Rose. I just remember like one out. her being scared <laughs> of. Uh, she was scared of snakes, and I was all fucked up. And like, someone had my snake, mm-hmm. and I was passed out in the room. And I woke up, and she's just like. Someone has yeah, it was the me. snake, and I was like, okay, and she's like, boom, just punch me, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I just like had woken up and got punched for someone else having. Never in, in my fucking entire life have I seen someone get punched so hard. It was beautiful. I got punched so many times. I'm kind of sad I missed it. No, I don't dude, remember. It was. No. It was. A I missed like all of the Summer Hill parties. I was like just kind of coming into the crew. I yeah. made a few of them, and then I. I went back to Toronto, and then that's when the eviction yeah. party happened. Yeah. And then I just heard all about it. But if well, you start bringing the DJ to your parties, like the spin, that's when it kind of well, gets out of hand. the first time I ever brought a DJ to my party was when I brought uh, Jason Voltaire and the Mad Ones. Yeah, I remember um, that. I, who used to do uh, Sapphires. Yeah. Mad I brought them familiar. on 4th Avenue in Verdun on the third floor at the Treehouse. Halloween, right? Yeah, Halloween. We had the smoke machine. 
which fucked up all my carpeting, and I had to rip up all the carpeting. It was and a then, house party, and you had sponsors. Yeah, I had sponsors. That all shit over. was nuts. Yeah, like we how does banners, okay? How does that even happen? How can that? And that was the biggest like, house party I've ever thrown. I think you're getting sponsors for a house party. We had sponsors. And when you start and having I'm someone on turntables, right okay. when you have start something having someone on turntables, how long can that shit last before it can shut down? Dude, five honestly, hours. ridiculously five long. Hours. I don't know what happened there, but it um, was crazy. Like you would think that's like right away. What the fuck is going on upstairs? We're calling the cops. The neighbors downstairs, they were actually people that we knew, so like it really didn't matter. Fuckers robbed my house. I guess it's chill if yeah, you can Yeah, they like, robbed the house too. I guess it's cool if you can find a building that's like a community of people. Fucker fuck number with. one and fucker number yeah. two. And and fucker <laughs> number one delivered <laughs> my bacon puts in yesterday. Mm. Yeah. So now he knows where Now he knows where you live, so um, we're probably going to get but, robbed uh, tonight. <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> if I could top five things that happen at my parties. Yeah. Ranked. Five to one. It's going to be hard because I'm already thinking of the best one. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and say the number one. It was on <laughs> Aragon Street, the Aragon Street in Villamard, my first place when I was a little bit Mel. Uh-huh. And the guy came in my house with the hatchet. Oh, yeah. And he was like, who's, who's the owner? Who's DJ? Because someone told him outside. He asked who the owner was because it was so loud. So he came in with the hatchet with the neighbor. And someone said, the owner is DJ. And he's like, who's DJ? And I looked at him and I was like, not me. And I walked away. And he went right up to Jodri with the hatchet. And he's like, hey. And Jodri's like, whoa. Like, you know, he's like, I ain't gonna live here, guy. Like, Poor little And the Jodri cops had man. come in to give me my, like, third noise complaint ticket. I was already at, like, $400 of tickets. And they came to give me my third one and, like, banish people. But when they walked in the house, I was there. And I was like, there's a guy with a hatchet in the back trying uh. to kill me. <laughs> Jesus. And they went in the back, and they ended up arresting that guy. Yeah, yeah. What a way to deflect it, though. Like, I still it's kind of like, oh, well, okay, to be you fair, like, sucks yeah. then. you got a ticket still? Yeah. Are you serious? Number two, hatchet first, ticket later. Number two, when I got all the tickets at the treehouse during that one with the DJs, and we passed around a hat. Yeah. And everyone who everyone put in as much money as they had. And yeah, could. all their like change. And I managed and shit. to pay off a ticket and a half out of three with That's like good. change. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we got to be honest. Like, there is a budget whenever you throw a house party. Yeah. This, this, the budget for this house yeah. party was like seven, seven bucks. Seven bucks, man. Uh, like, I think he got like three little Canadian, you know, Chinese the batteries cost me more than the, yeah, than the paper lanterns cost me. So, yeah, all you, all you fucking kids out there are going to start throwing crazy ragers and like stack the place with people. Don't forget, like, have your liquor, have your, your party supply fund, but. Get like a ticket fine fund together yeah. because like, that's going to be the thing that the, fucks you the, the most best in the end. Thing to do, which I didn't realize as a kid, which I do now, is tell your neighbors. Always yeah, let yeah, your neighbors yeah. I feel know. like if you're honest, they'll kind of like they'll fuck with they'll you a little bit, a bit, but yeah. they'll still get a bit pissed. Like I, I did that a few times. Yeah. And then they still got pissed off at me because I obviously took it way overboard of what I should have. Yeah, but me too. I always do. But the thing is, I'm always like, I told them. Like, you know, like, I give my number, like, they have my address, and I'm just, like... To be fair, though, like, anything. if you really think about it, you tell your neighbor you're going to have a party. They're like, oh, okay, there's going to be a little gathering. Maybe they're going to have some noise. Yeah. Midnight, 1 o'clock, it's Canada Day. Yeah. They don't understand the parties yeah. that you oh, throw, yeah, bro. They don't know. <laughs> Did the That's people the moving downstairs already from in this in this spot? Yeah, um, I told them. Um... It's actually a friend of a friend who lives downstairs, so I told him to come upstairs and play. Right, so you, can, yeah. you made like a, a good kid. common connection. Yeah, yeah so. the best is to, like you just invite your neighbors. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I get mean, them so fucking turned like that they don't even give a shit. But this anymore. place, in all fairness, is definitely the more is is the is the the new era of yeah. DJ of like well, yeah, chill like, low. This is the like, clean DJ. Yeah, man. Like you got like you like put work into it. Literally went from wanna, like, I'm clean DJ. I pay my bills, DJ. Best way to I'm say DJ, it. DJ. I take showers every day, DJ. Didn't used to do that, but that's what I say. The DJ. best way to say it is, <laughs> the best way to sum it up is literally you went from open door anything go jams to fucking like social gatherings yeah. and get togethers. Yeah. The so only like thing make my house at two or yeah. I will something like... we we've kind of been teasing on this whole podcast like so far is the eviction party. We need to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that I'm getting, party to, I'm getting was... to the top moments. So talk. Okay. Okay. Keep so going. Number keep three. Going. Number three. Oh man, I'm trying to think of like all. I think number three has to go to my first house party ever. Ever in my that? life, which was the one I threw my mom's house on. Oh, yeah, dude, Shots and Jack. 
Throw we shot through Jack Knight. Throwback shit. <laughs> when I woke up, she was gone. I don't know where the hell they went. But when I woke up, I forgot the bag of ice on the table, and it had melted 100%, a whole bag of ice. And it, and it leaked into, like, off the table, under the floorboards, and the whole floor had risen in the basement, so there was a bump, and the table was on an angle. And I didn't know what to do, so I just started stomping it. And I was like, I broke all the tiles, and like, it was the funniest fucking thing. My, my mom was like, just like, what the fuck? I remember, and I was like, oh. I remember that, that night so I was well. Like, it was so that like, was like the night you saved my life. Yeah, because you were drowning Let's in your tell, own like, Yeah, water. Tell, them, tell them that story. Yeah, he, uh, Shiloh was pretty drunk, and he oh, went to go so get, drunk. what, you went to wash your face or just go get water? I was puking, so I was like yeah, washing so you were my face. Yeah, puking in the sink, and it was like one of those like, laundry sinks. Laundry sinks, yeah, so it was deep. So he's just hanging in it, and he put the water on to wash himself while he was puking, but I guess his chunks of puke had blocked the sink, <laughs> and the water was just rising. And then I walk in the room, and I found him, and he was, like, face first in the water. Like, like pretty much out. drowning, yeah. Pretty much drowning, yeah. And Living I, like, life like a fallen fucking rock star. And yeah, I pulled man. him out, and, like, I, I mean, like, that's not the I first like time. 20 years old, right after a nice concert. Like, it was pretty sick. When you, had the, when you got the Ritz cracker sandwiches... And they were peanut butter and not cheese. And you went oh, to, yeah. you had a handful, and I smacked them out of your hand, and you were like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" And I was like, "God, are you serious?" And you're like, "Oh, it's shit. safe to say you've saved my life a few times." But I've also like always had your back in fights, so that's always good. What are you yeah, like, yeah, what? yeah fuck you. Fuck you. Never had, no, because I we had fights. Exactly. We had fights, so you couldn't have my yeah. back against yourself. Yeah, no, I had your your nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good time. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. But yeah, man. Let's so talk about the eviction party. Let's talk yeah. about how Summerhill came to an end and crumbled to the ground with yeah. this. Summerhill party. started. It, it all was started new. like this. I'm gonna tell you the story. This is the story all about how Summerhill started. It was upside down. Um, I got evicted and Turner got evicted, and we both got evicted in the middle of winter. And you were roommates with two other people. And yeah, but can um, you really count them? Me and Turner were looking for a place, and we knew our friend Rico needed a place too. So he was never there though. We. They were like, the faces of the yeah, apartment. Yeah, like, much. like he was like the, the the actual like stand up guy who like yeah. he yeah. lived there, you know, and he had to work and stuff. <laughs> we knew we didn't want the old the typical Verdun place anymore. We were tired of it. We wanted to live downtown. We knew that downtown, they it was like cash and you get the place, no questions asked. Yeah, that is slumlords. So we found Summerhill. We stumbled upon it just driving around, and um, we walk in the place. We were like, anything available? They're like, upstairs. So they show us, and it was like, we knew Rico was going to be in the tiny room. He didn't want nothing. Like, he didn't care, you know? So we just saw our rooms, how big they were. We were like, we're taking it, you know? How much? Eleven seventy five. We had like, I think, 300 bucks on us. We were going <laughs> to pack at the time, but we never went. We were always dr- like drinking at brass and shit, smoking weed and whatever. So we go there, and Joey St. Denis, mm-hmm. um, he was at pack as well, and we borrowed money from Joey. We borrowed money from my brother. We borrowed money from Turner's like friends. We borrowed money from Rico. We borrowed money from everybody. We had no money. And we came up with the money. It was first come, first serve. We came up with the money in like three hours. Luckily. eleven seventy five. We walked in and we paid the first month's rent. We had to pay everybody back. And for a lot of people you don't know that like Montreal rent is pretty much expensive. So eleven seventy five is a lot. But you only have to pay first month. Yeah. They're like yeah. in, in on in Toronto you have to pay first and last. Like you have to like come with a lot of funds like, to get set up. Yeah, eleven seventy five in like Toronto or something like that is like a fucking So you already bedroom. know just for the fact you only have to pay first month, you're already like Understanding that yeah. Montreal scene's gonna be pretty fucking rage it's compared, right. compared to downtown. other places. Especially like downtown. So it's meant for it's meant for record. teenagers and young Adults like ourselves to to have a place and yeah and uh, yeah crazy shit is bound to happen. But so yeah, you were saying, but uh, yeah, so we got the apartment and I mean the first week we were just like figuring our life out, trying to get everything from the garbages, couches, yeah. beds, everything. Did you move? What what was it like in the winter? Yeah, yeah, we had nothing. People were always moving out. Oh yeah, like, that's true. Um, anyway, I had a first thing that happened. First crazy thing that happened was. I, we had a cat with a whole bunch of kittens. <laughs> we had like 12 kittens. And I didn't know what to do with them, and I couldn't handle this cat anymore. And, or the kittens. So we knew the people across the hall moved out, and we went right across. And I put all the kittens and the cat in the empty apartment, closed the door, and then like a day later, I messaged the landlord, and I was like, 
hey, like, I keep, like, I know that people moved out across, but I keep hearing cats, like, meowing. <laughs> I think they must have left their cats. Landlord grabbed him and he took care of the cats. He ended up giving like a kitten to each person in the building. That's so hilarious. like in the end it fixed itself. What'd you do? Like throw him down the, the fire escape? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just put him in a box. Um, but it was good. And then we start meeting people in the building. And then people start coming up. And then now that we were downtown, every time someone was going to a bar, it would pre-drink at our place. Yeah, this. yeah. And I think that's what initially made it the Rager House. Oh, yeah. It so, was, it was so, so close, close to, to all the bars we, we would that's go it. to back so then. It was like, where are we pre-drinking? Obviously, Obviously, DJ and Turner's. Where are we go- you know? where are we pre-drinking before the parade? Each room. Big mistake. Each room <laughs> had like a full living room in it, including a bedroom. Oh, yeah. and that, those your room was definitely the best room in that yeah. place. But that's because you put like work in yeah. yeah. Turner's room was big too. But though. Turner's room was bigger. Yeah, Didn't actually. you live in both apartments? There's one across the street, uh, across no, the hall? that was Nuke who lived that in Okay, so yeah. okay. And that's it. That I one think was not bad When either. Nuke came into the situation that's when it started getting crazy. well it's an appropriate name for him then yeah like, you, like literally you dropped a nuke on that fucking it was door. like you definitely shit you definitely came and shifted a group of people's lives yeah, like a hundred percent uh like safe to say yeah. like we, we the had least some to say there, man. like <laughs> yeah. that that is like th- like that apartment specifically is some of my best memories like house party wise yeah, and there were fights there there oh, was like there was fires there were Cops, there was everything that went. Everything went yeah. down at that fucking. Place. All we were missing was a murder. Yeah, it's definitely what. And happened. it was very close, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What <laughs> happens in Summerhill stays in. Summerhill. One of my favorite moments of Summerhill was when I woke up at like seven in the morning because there was this dog barking. Okay, and the window view from my room was into the. Co- there was a courtyard that was completely closed off. Summerhill was like a a circle, like a square, but like within a hollow inside, and there was just like. All you could see was brush and trees. It was like you didn't know what was under there. And every so often you'd see garbage. People would toss their garbage out the window just into the random courtyard. No one knew how to get to it. And I once, like, I wake, wake up and I had the window open and I heard, hoo, 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 this dog barking all morning. And then some guy just, like, screams out the window, kill your dog. <laughs> and I fucking died, eh? Like, I just laughed out loud in my room by myself. The community finally spoke up. <laughs> we, we bought an Xbox. Xbox broke. We launched it out the window. Yeah. Guitar oh, broke. We launched it You can it relate out the to window. that, Shadow. Oh, I can, I can relate to, to We're something. We're going to get to your, your I got a good story. After. I got a good story for, oh, for you from Summerhill. Yeah? Uh, oh, from Summerhill. Yeah, it actually reminds me of this because... One like one time we were at one of DJ's parties and we met like a bunch of girls who lived in the building, right? So I ended up talking to one of the girls and like whatever, you know, things happen. I ended yeah. up hooking up with her. But like she lives downstairs from DJ, one fucking floor under, and just a little to the right. And <laughs> so I bang her, whatever, and then like I look and I look out the window and I just see Turner's car. And I don't think Turner knows this yet. So like every fucking rubber I use, I just shut up the window on Turner's car. Oh Terrible. my god, dude! But you know that like the we were we were crazy yeah. back then. But you know what? You I did his car? car with your DNA. Oh yeah, dude! You know what I did <laughs> Turner's car. Every single fucking condom was like boom, boom, he went boom, to, boom. Uh, <laughs> he went to Cuba. Yeah, and he went with like Dave and uh, Adam and stuff. And he says, "Could you do me a favor? Could you make sure I don't get a ticket? Because he gets." When he was living downtown, it was like a ticket every two days, you know? Well, he gives you the keys? So he gives oh, me the keys, yes. and he says, just move the car. So I throw a party one night, and I'm all fucked up, and I'm like, wait a second. I remember even I have to car. move the car. So I get in the car with my buddy Memphis, and we're on just, we're on some drugs. Shout out to Memphis. We're all yeah. fucked up, and we get in the car, and we both don't know how to drive. And we both don't have a license. And <laughs> I drive it down to Lincoln Street. Oh, just Lincoln, down the hill. Lincoln's trouble. And there's like the no parking. So I go and I back up and I hit a car. And I go forward and I hit a car. So I back up to get out and I hit a car. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, and then I just stop for like two seconds and I'm talking to Memphis and then a cop drives by. And we're holding the steering wheel. We're like shaking all drugged out. And I'm like, okay. And we just drive it back up behind the cop. We go back up the hill, park it back in the spot. I put the keys back and I was like, He's getting a ticket, and I like <laughs> left it there. Like I didn't know what to do. I was just like, I know I for I know up. for a you know? fact that oh, Turner probably sorry, had like seven hundred dollars of tickets. Not from that one. I owe him alone, at least one hundred and thirty-five bucks. But definitely from ticket. living living downtown, like you're gonna get like crazy amounts of tickets. I knew this girl 
who lived on Lincoln, and she legit had like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars of tickets. Yeah, that's honestly just fuck Lincoln. that street. That street like, is really. You weird. have to find parking, yeah. and ninety percent of the time you cannot find parking. It's, it's a terrible place. Yeah. It's El Terrible, and I say that in Spanish because of so how let's, serious let's, it is. Let's talk about like what we've been teasing this entire time. Yeah. The most important thing on this subject: the, the finale will be eviction party. Eviction. To tell us. Oh my God, dude! It Shout all started like party. this. We had we had been evicted. So everyone was just we're all poor. We were always looking for different jobs. We were fucking we were ruined. And you had a hundred thousand parties. We had so many parties, we yeah. had tickets. That's probably why you we got evicted, eat. though. <laughs> when our shirts were dirty, we would go down the street to American Apparel and buy a new shirt because we didn't want to do laundry. It was so easy to access it. So, eventually we ran out of money. We did so much stupid shit and we got evicted. The landlord had... I was like... Just like American Apparel, you ran out of I was on my knees. <laughs> I almost Damn, put a ball fired. in my mouth, guy. Like... I was like, don't kick us out. Oh, oh, oh. Like, Please, I'll do it. You know? I'll suck your dick. <laughs> yeah, I'll suck like, your dick. It was already in there, guy. I was like doing it, and he still said no. Oh, shit. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> so, we got evicted. And then I was like, let's do an eviction party. Because fuck that. Like, yeah. Who fucking, shit, like, man? at this time, we shit? were well connected. We yeah. had fucking flyers made. Like, so, legit flyers, eviction party, with the picture it. of the door. So, we were selling beer, everything. Five bucks a person. Yeah. At a house. At a house. And party. we knew that we And like, trust me, that was a good you that best yeah. five dollars you ever and this spent is like, in your life. And this is like definitely yeah. before we were all doing like like the crafts we are now. So yeah. all of the energy went into party planning. That's it. Yeah. Kitchen was coat check. Yeah. If you wanted stuff in the fridge you had to ask the person coat Two bucks of beer, only paps, yeah. blue ribbon. Or bring your own, that was it. Yeah. And anyway, it worked out so well we made so much money, but then the cops came for the super eviction. It was yeah. like eviction? Super eviction, you know what I mean? And like in in this apartment, luckily uh, there was like this like fire escape built into the place, right? So yeah, you open the up the door room. and boom, fire escape right down all the way like to any apartment you want to go to, whatever. So we had about fucking like 30, 30 people hiding in the the, yeah. the fire escape this whole time, you know. Thirty in the fire. There were thirty. And that was only escape. after the second time the cops came. Yeah. When the cops came, it was actually there was um. Probably about 15 cops in the doorway, in the yeah, hallway. Oh, wow, there were so many. Um, they literally gave us no choice but to walk out. They yeah. shut down the power of the apartment. Yeah. They There was two, like, drunk tank trucks outside. There was, like, people trapped in the doorway downstairs yeah. trying to get in, calling me. They, they even tried to charge us, like, like, give us a ticket because we were selling alcohol. Yep. We had but, to take the event down immediately on Facebook, like, yeah. to make sure that the cops yeah. and cats. We probably sold like maybe 50, two, uh, 50 12 packs of paps for yeah, two bucks yeah, a beer. That's that's yeah. some good money, you know. Like, and then definitely making some cash there. After all, and we ended up at Nukes and we were all fucked up and we like stayed there because we couldn't get back into the apartment. After all that, I think a week or a half later, we were like, let's do an eviction party at a venue. And we ended up doing eviction 2.0. Yeah, what? F- at vinyl at or something? Vinyl. Yeah. Well, vinyl yeah, vinyl, vinyl was a weird place. It had. Yeah. It was, like a, was sick. Like I, it I used to love that place. It was like a small portion of. Now party. it's for junk ass hipsters from Mile End and the Plateau. The Plateau. <laughs> Terrible. You fucking fedora wearing fucking sweater scarfers. <laughs> Krupa. Krupa. <laughs> no, Jeez. I'm kidding. Krupa. That was a joke. Krupa. I apologize. Yeah, but, but you know, like at, at all this, like while all this was going on, we were like trying to start a production company called JDB. Um, what was it? Just, just drink beer. Just, just uh, do blow. Just do blow. We had like a million names for it. Just dream big was the the. Yeah. <laughs> just Dave bitching. Just Dave bitching. That, that was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. that I fucking I, I made that one up and like honestly because like one of the co-founders of like the thing was was Dave and like as if anybody knows Dave. He just would bitch a lot back then. You know, Dave's a good if guy and all, but... Dave would have had it his way, though. Like, now, if he... If, I don't know if they, he still has JDB. I don't know if it's still no, JDB. No, it's not. It's no, that's, Reeboks, that's 100% you know? dead yeah. now. It would be, like, just drum and bass. Yeah, like, just drum and bass. Which I really, like, despise. <laughs> I really, like, despise. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, hate that. I, f- I feel you on that, though. Like, <laughs> I think we've all had... Talk, speaking on, like, parties... We've all had like an apartment. 
each. Oh, where fuck yeah. I think everybody in the crew has that one or two year phase where it's like you have to have an apartment to, to get through that party phase. Yeah, yeah. Like yours was on Sherbrooke. You were like throwing mm-hmm. shit out the window. Yeah, the fridge, man. Oh, Me that fridge. The fridge and we broke the tree. That fridge. I'm, I'm saying shout out to Mary... But like, fuck you, Mary, for not getting that footage that time. That shout was out to <laughs> shout yeah. out to being drunk. We shot that, and she's like, "Oh, sorry, I wasn't recording." Yeah, yeah throwing no. shit out the window was an epic moment. Shout out to being drunk at like four in the morning in your kitchen, oh, watching man. DJ face a whole cheesecake in like five minutes. I could eat anything in five minutes. Yeah, but, like, like, but literally, there, you have like a, you have a serious a love connection deadline. to cheesecake. There's like yeah. something really serious there with you and cheesecake. Yo, you know, actually, Jordan, I ain't fucking. Paying for my next tattoo because you still owe me a cheesecake. The guy, <laughs> Yo. the guy walked into my like house. Saint, oh, I'm like, like, I'm like, Yo, DJ some, came on our. If you want DJ came on our podcast to just to get fun. all of his all of his beefs out of the way in one place, so no Yo. one has to ask him about you them. You know who again. I am? I'm Joe Button. Yo, like, Yo, for real. But honestly, like, I'm like, hey, bud. I'm like, if you're hungry, you can have whatever you want, like in the fridge. And like, I figured like a slice of cheesecake. So he's like, yeah. He's like, can I have some of this cheesecake? So I said, yes. And he ate the whole thing except for one tiny piece, probably the size of my thumb. <laughs> he, put, he left it in the fridge with a fork, and then I didn't touch it for two days because I was just like, I'm going to get to cheesecake like when I'm real hungry. And then I went to get to it, and there was a bite. And I messaged him right away. And he starts, right away, I'm like, bro, my cheesecake. And he's laughing, eh? And I was, I was laughing too, but like I was like, I was like, God, why would you leave a bite? And yeah, like, you were laughing, but those are no laughing matters. There was no laughing. Yeah, I feel like if you're going to like actually Foods? put the put a sliver back, you just got to go the whole distance yeah, at that like, point. Like dedicate to Yeah, a because at that point, like, that that putting a sliver back is like, it's making it's an, such it's an, an insult. insult. It's, an, an insult. it's making such a bold statement <laughs> to that person. Like, it's kind of like, I mean, the I'm willing to start like, a war with you. <laughs> like, you know D- what I mean? DJ mentioned that he left the fork there. So it was like. It was almost like an hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck, man. Terrible. Damn. Shout out to Sarah Lee. When you, when you get... Sarah Lee. I feel like we know a girl named that, but I do. it's just the cheesecake. I do. Not going to lie, though. Like... Waitress from Steak Frit, actually. Um, yeah. But shout Sarah out to Sarah Lee's, Lee. Sarah Lee's, Laura Lee's. It's... Oh, yeah. Isn't that Laura Lee? No, there's Sarah Lee also. Oh, shit. Well, it's like a... I'm just going to throw a lot out there. Like, it's like the cans. fact that you're complaining about a Sarah Lee cheesecake, though, like... I thought I it was like a good cheesecake. Like a Broadway cheesecake. I'm a little bit disappointed in your cheesecake game. Well, it's because I, I only had $8. Okay, fair enough. And $8 can only buy you a slice of real good I'm cheesecake. I'm not going to lie, though. Like, usually like a, a Sarah Lee cheesecake, cheesecake is like given like to you by good? your mom. High end? Or, like, mid, is it, or is it just like a, is good. a place okay, well, that everyone goes to because well, it's like a franchise? One time for my birthday, I got like to taste literally every cheese uh, or every cake that Rockaberries has. And there are some good ones. Like a nice like banana, banana fucking chocolate chip. Pretty damn good. I heard Rockaberry is, um, is the plug. Their pie game, I Very would not key. say it strongly. They have pies and they have cakes. And their pies, not so good. I don't really fuck with pie. Oh, dude. Strawberry I like, fucking strawberry I'm just, like, rhubarb. I'm just a regular degular guy who likes pumpkin pie and that's it. Yo, pumpkin pie is great. I don't fuck with apple pie. I anything like that. hate pumpkin pie. There's something about it, man. There's something about pumpkin pie. A lot of, people, a lot of people say that. You know what's funny? They, they, they say the same thing as you. It's not like... They don't describe something like specific. They're just like, there's something about pumpkin yeah. pie that I can't fuck with. Like, it, it's the same thing with Pump. like cilantro, mm. right? Like, Pump. some people just hate cilantro. Cilantro is in guacamole. I love guacamole. But cilantro, apparently, to a certain percentage of people, tastes like fucking soap. I, I just think an Which avocado is I'm gonna have to, right? avocado is the I'm most gonna have to forfeit thing. my drink. That's okay. I actually Damn. Need to make a new one. Damn. Really? Because that drink is just like. Yeah, he can't handle it. Was it the same thing we made? Yeah. Or you put that. I'm weird. not a fan of. No, no. I'm not a fan of it's soda, just like water, tonic no, no, no. water, shit. I feel you. I'm like, I'm not a fan of a lot I'm, of things. You know, I'm, you know what? I'm not a fan of really like drinking a lot of like back to back mixed drinks with Coke. Like I, yeah, I it's like I used drinking. To love you know what? Coke. Getting drunk where that much soda is involved is never a good time. No, it depends. Does That's I why ever... I try to make all my drinks with like soda water and like. That's why it's better to have fountain drink. When mm. you're drinking alcohol, because yeah. fountain drink is like half water, half soda, so it's a little bit like. I don't mind mixing like my vodka and like sparkling water, like a forty old. Don't West don't water. ever say sparkling water again. Well, if it's flavor. <laughs> you sparkling to... water. Sparkling water. Sparkle. <laughs> it's not that bad, you know what I no, mean? No, no, I fuck with, with it. With a little too. bit of flavor. That's like what I'm drinking, but I'm not gonna say it. A little bit. I'm not of gonna say it on that podcast. Be, be real, on record. Uh, 
Okay, let's talk some music. Be real in here. Because DJ is the guy you want to talk. About I know everything about music. Yeah. Well, DJ has a very distinct taste. His so, taste is kind of So weird. right now, top five rappers you're listening to that are consistently in your on your playlist. I'm calling it right rappers now. Rappers or hip-hop in general? I'm calling it right now. Maybe no R&B white stuff? rappers yeah, yeah, any, is going to come from Anything DJ's within the mind. whole R&B, hip-hop. Black white rappers. Five. I know you hate white rappers. <laughs> okay. Top five. Top if five. I'm going to go through my phone for a second. Uh, that's cheating. Oh, you should just know off the top, top of your five. Dome. Top five. Number one that I'm listening to right now. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to SZA's album. Mm-hmm. Nasty good. Really yeah, good. I don't relate to these um, feminine issues because obviously, like, you're an I'm asshole. a man. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm an asshole. But, <laughs> but I mean, like, aren't you just an asshole because you're a man? I can see how it's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not getting into this. I don't yeah, need no, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> No, but uh, I, I don't know. It's a really good album. The vocals are amazing. She's yeah. always amazing. She's like, she's pretty much what Janae Aiko could have been, but she decided to sign with TDE, so fuck her. Hmm. Um, next album, next person, Isaiah Rashad. I know it's another TD. I don't mean to be a TD dick writer, but Isaiah Rashad, if there's only if there's one mumble rapper I'll listen to, it's Isaiah Rashad. Bada bip bop bip bop boo. Like <laughs> the guy, like he to be like to be super. He fair, actually says something his there, though. Flow, he does. Um, Shout out rapgenius.com for helping us out every time <laughs> we get fucked up. But um, no, he honestly, uh, his flow is crazy. He has a flow like no other person. Um, his lyrics. I feel are like really he's crazy. definitely when one of the most underrated in yeah, TD. When you listen to him, absolutely under, the most underrated in TD. But we're not. But that, we're not that's the thing with TDE right though. All those guys get undershot. And I feel like when you're with TDE, you're just like under Kendrick. But that's the same with like Drake and an OVO thing, yeah, right? The two people There's who are always underrated that breakout at the moment are J. Sometimes. Cole and Ab- uh, not J. Cole, um, J. Rock and Absol on that album, on that uh, label. But yeah, Isaiah Rashad, crazy. Um, then we're going to go with. I don't think any more guys from TDE at the moment. Oh, Lil Yachty. Uh, you're really not gonna mention that really soul, like, as like one of them. And there's actually a not to, there's gonna a song that I'm gonna play for you in a bit that I want to yeah. get your reaction on, which I told you I was gonna do. Yeah, and you right. wanted me to save it because I know you're going to be pissed off. But yeah, that's the point. Um, number three, Joy Badass's new album is fucking fire. It's dirty. It's crazy. He, it's, it's because he really political. found his voice. He finally yeah. found his, his he's spot. Like, he's out of the 90s shit, but at the same time still with the 90s flow, which is throwing Static Select on the beat and all that shit, so that's really cool. Um, fuck Assad. That fucking kid's a bitch. Uh, DJ Khaled, ta- come at me. Um, no, Jesus. you are talking about that. Assad. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Wild with the shots. He's but, just uh, a little baby. He's yeah. just a baby. He's just a baby And his boy. father's a big baby. Oh God, okay, yeah. what do you think the, the craziest part, though? The fact that Assad has all these followers or the fact that DJ Khaled has to make sure that he never films the kid when the he's crying. The whole social media... Because his whole thing is, Assad doesn't cry, he's so happy, but social the kid media definitely cries, and that takes oh, yeah. work to never sure to make sure cries. you filter out all of his moments he does cry. So he's definitely working to get the best moments on camera social with Assad. Social media is a that's, which that's is like a, pretty Which is like almost a full-time job when it's with a baby. Like... Yo, but I'm not gonna lie. That's a fucking cute baby, man. Like that kid. That kid is cute. That kid's killing it. Like what's his little suit? Any kid's cute like, if you're like you have a fucking viral and you have to. Yeah, see no. It any kid. Any kid day. is cute if you don't have to take care of it. One million followers and his latest post was. Didn't he only have half of that yesterday? Yeah, like two Holy days. Shit. He's, so he's at and he did his first interview with Mass Appeal, oh, a text message interview. Hey, I'm really gonna Joe Budden if you guys continue talking about this shit. Just go I'm ahead. Stand up and Talk. walk out. Like, do not fucking do that. I will do it. <laughs> Can, can you, uh, can you, can make you fire me a drink up the TV? Or? Number four, Anderson Pack. Okay, fair. Anderson Pack. Who's playing Grammy Genesis. nominated? He's Grammy playing next weekend. Winner? Yeah. Grammy winner? Maybe? I, don't, I don't know if he's got a Grammy in the, I don't know. Well, he's Pop definitely Grammy is, nominated, at very least. One of Dre's better signs. Sounds like a. He worked a with Kate Kendrick. Yeah, he works with. Uh, Which works we talked about last week. Check out our podcast from last week. Um, I just feel like he was. He was robbed of. His spotlight because from Double XL because he was in such a poo class, and that whole the last two three years of Double XL was just you shit. know what I find too like I find like a lot of people with Double XL, uh, 
let's say double XL comes out today and then like six months later I find like a lot of the people who are like really shining in the middle of a year yeah. get like left out of double XL. Well the double XL freshman class has been like such a is like probably the one of the most debated things on the internet because you get all of these rappers that I feel like the staff of double XL puts way too in the spotlight spontaneously without yeah. really looking what their career is going to do and they claim that they really look at the numbers they they really try to make their best guesses off they're going to be successful but i guarantee you it's all about social media i guarantee you a good seven out of ten aren't going to be next year artists and some will where's mick jenkins on the fucking double xl guy like people who actually can spit bars but a lot a lot of people you have to keep in mind i think it's like really like you have to keep in mind a lot of a lot of rappers now are turning down the publication because they don't give a shit anymore like look at post malone had one of the biggest breakout years whether you hate him or not yeah white iverson took over radio everywhere it went like absolutely viral and they they snubbed him because apparently that they talked to him on the phone and he said that he want he wanted uh he wasn't going to do hip-hop music anymore but really they twisted his convo where all he said was, I'm going to do hip-hop music still, but I'm also going to do folk and, and put in some country. And they didn't like that. He was stepping outside of his box and they looked at him like... But they, when you're, when they, you're they, talking about They looked artist. at him like he wasn't really going to be representing the hip-hop culture anymore. So they kind of looked at it like a fuck you. Yeah. And they didn't want to put him on something that represented being a, fir- like a full-out rap. When you're talking about an artist too, like Post Malone, he's smart in a way because he's not just riding a wave. A lot of these artists nowadays are doing like mumble rap and they're doing like certain like genres and stuff that probably are not going to last. I don't, for yeah, a long Post Malone isn't mumble rap. No, like no, he's full no, on he's, singing. He's right? definitely like, not mumble rap at all. He's not at all mumble rap. But the thing is, he's smart because he's he's like opening himself up to like new possibilities to be different, to be a little bit weird, and that's what it takes, you know, like to be like kind of like someone who who just like you know makes music that follows like a certain path. But like not fucking just sticks to one. I have a good opinion. This is my. I know opinion. you don't like Post Malone. He's white. He ain't right. <laughs> Number one, Ja Rule. Yeah, yeah. Ja Rule is cool. Ja Rule is tough. Still? Number one, always gonna be no. Murder Inc. No. No. I yeah. don't know. Eminem no. showed him up. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. But no, with Post Malone, Malone, I'll say this: when White Iverson dropped, everyone thought he was a culture vulture, a one-hit wonder. I'll say if if his debut album, if Stoney didn't. Deliver to what it was, he would have been finished. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. But I yeah. just every single song on Stony is decent. It's, at very least, I don't know. every song I personally find. I like the really project. Good, I fuck with every it. fucking. That's song that's that's, a, that's an album I was able to get through front front to back without yeah, like no skip problem. overs and shit. So this is what no, I want to show you. It, it just it just proves if, though what I'm trying to say is like it you, proves that he fucking actually is like down to bend. He's not yeah. just gonna stick in one genre. He like, wasn't just copy where the and fuck is like what, where the fuck is people like things. Ugly God gonna be in a year? Like f- who the fuck is Ugly God? But like where's where's Triple X Temptation gonna be in a year? Post Malone ain't gonna be around. The for style five is. Albums. I, I'm not saying he's gonna but be around. The, the reason for I five feel albums, like they're gonna be around. But what he is gonna be around for is like he's gonna change music style because he can like. Play the guitar a bit. He can fucking do like country. A lot of these guys though have called for I think think he'll surprise you, bro. I think he'll surprise you. The roast is real. But shout out to Poster. He's one of my favorite artists. Number one though. Live show fucking. Number one that I'm listening to right now is Vince Staples. Vince Vince Staples is very good. Project is disgusting. He is the skinny that carries strong heat. That really fucking resonates with my skinny ass. Cause I wish I was a skinny motherfucker. We were having that conversation, me and you, the other day. How he hasn't had that breakout the other day. That's what. How he hasn't had his breakout moment. You know what I mean? Like he's like he's like on the verge of really bubbling into something. And he has the respect from all the artists. But this is what I wanted to show you. Speaking of mumble rap and like viral Um, hits, I don't even say what it is. Just I'm gonna give you my phone and you type it in. Um, where? Fuck. Yeah. No. Like honestly, man, music nowadays is very strange. And who knows what's going to be fucking popular next year? That and that's, and that's the I'm thing. People to need to understand that it's not as traditional as it once was. You kind of have to like in yes. this day and age, you have to either get with the weirdo shit or just fade out. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, man. Like the weirdo shit that they're like they're coming out with now. Like there's a very like I find like the younger generation is listening to a lot of this like weird For rap, example, rap that's like repetitive. I just have to say before we put this on, I have to agree like. 
no one should even be caring too much about this, but I have to agree with the Joe Budden situation with the Migos. Oh, yeah, example. definitely. Show respect the, the your kid, elders. The, the guy is sitting there, and he's literally mumbling, and he you he, you know he can talk normal. Yeah, mumble rapping on an interview. You know what I mean? You know he can talk normal, and you're there, and you're being completely disrespectful, and you know they can't understand you, and you're just, like, trolling. Right. And, like, you fucking groups like this, and artists like this, have no fucking respect for anybody. You have no respect for the people who are who are promoting you because well, this is free promotion you're getting you're, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. you're on Hot 97 you're on this and this and yeah. you're insulting these in music you're insulting people like Big Boy and Sway and things like this who who have done their 100% for the community well and this is like a, this is assholes. a complex that they have you know? it's like a god complex like, and they rap, think they are bigger yeah. than everything and rap though one thing that a lot of rappers need to realize is there are going to be media and publications that try to fuck you over and talk shit but you have to understand coming into the game they are your friends. They are people to become allies yeah. with because mm. they they bring your brand up. Well, like, one we thing know Sway doesn't have all the answers. One thing but, with with Migos like, though, <laughs> one thing with Migos is they like the reason that they're acting like this with, on the Joe Budden thing is like because they have beef with him from something that he said to someone else, you know, and like that that can't fucking fly. When it comes down to it, to like end the subject on them, they make hit songs, they make good music, but they cannot interview for shit. And they should just stop giving interviews. They should just stick to their music. If they can't give a good interview, they should just keep it to the music so they don't have to keep having problems with other publications. I have to change my shirt because I have blood on it. Jesus blood Christ. Blood shirt. Because it never washed out. That old, that okay. old mid, play this mid-interview shirt. shirt change. This song is called <laughs> Overwhelming. It's a, it's a rapper named Matt Ox. He's 12 years old. He's a white kid. And... I already don't like him. And <laughs> it's a, it's a two-minute song. Just let the song play out. And then give your opinion on it. It's only two minutes of your life. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll check it out oh, for sure. One second. Not too loud, though. We don't want to fuck with everybody's ears. All right. Since it. you can't see this, just type in Matt Ox. Overwhelming. So you could vibe with us on Holy this. shit, he's a beaver looking motherfucker, too. Holy fuck. Holy shit. He's got like fidget spinners and shit. I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> This guy is like straight up, like how does he even have like a crew? Like they all look like they're at least like 18, yeah, maybe 20 years old. That's the only thing they have in color. Oh shit. Okay, that's, okay. First and foremost, the first and foremost. This and, kid has uh, 7 million views on that video. So yeah, 7 million views. Guys, help it us just, get our, our it, view count It up. just came out in May now, okay. The whole thing with this. This guy rolls with like a group of serious guys who are really trapping and doing this shit. Do you think it's fucked up that a kid who is 12 years old is not only around that kind of shit, but is saying these kinds of things on record? Are you assuming that he's around this kind of shit because from the video though? Because no, in the in in the inter in the interview, from what okay. he said, they had like I, it was like a two-hour interview. Okay, okay. They went pretty in depth. The guys who who he was with seemed like they definitely like manage his career and everything he does they it seems like they're writing this shit because no 12 year old kid that looks like that knows what it's like to be in a trap house I feel or anything like, like that so that's feel kind like of twisted stitches from the past i feel like stitches filmed this video when he was a kid stitches. and just released it. <laughs> oh my god that's pretty heavy Honestly, like, yeah like yeah i i, I see what you what mean what i'm gonna say about this video what i what, what do you want me to say what, what i think about him like a kid just your overall thoughts on the song the video and i think like... it's trash i think it sounds the fucking flow first of all is the exact same as every other fucking song good for the fucking 12 year old kid for managing to like have like a whole song for himself and all these views but there's the problem is is like it's trash and he's like making fun of literally the culture again and these are the people who like the problem is, the culture is 
playing this video and showing everybody and laughing about it, so they're giving him the money. So in the end, it's literally a vicious cycle right now of a culture of our vulture. Culture vulture? Cult blah! Tongue twisters. We'll meet every day. <laughs> culture vulture. Culture vulture. Oh my culture god, vulture. I have to say that so slow. <laughs> and he's being picked up by the culture. Well, vulture. <laughs> but that, that's you know I mean? that. But that's what you have, just, that's like, one thing just, about music these days. If if something is encouraged on the internet, it's going to keep getting bigger. So it's a situation like this. It's in my opinion, it's trash. terrible. It's terrible. In I my opinion, this kid should be living his parents? life, doing other things, not this right now. Like it's one thing to be a young kid making music, but the subject matter is a bit this twisted for a twelve year old kid. This could also be a totally different situation. This could be a Macaulay Culkin situation. Oh my where god. The parents is that can Michael see Jackson the situation of like, hey, I can make money off my kid. Does my kid want to do this? Yeah, from what I Does from what I got, it's just his mom in the picture who's kind of like co-signing his career oh and like letting him do all serious? these shows and like these videos. And, and these are the kids too who are getting shows. Do you know? He played a uh, he played a sold out show in Ricky L.A. D. and he was like crowd surfing and shit. Like it was just, it looked really weird because I don't know if. If I if I'm in the crowd, I don't think I would want like a twelve year old yeah. boy crowd surfing on top of me. But It'd like, be kind of suspect. Yeah, that's so shout bad. Shout out, like, to, shout out to Ricky D, Ricky D Daily, who does all the hip hop shows in Montreal. Respect that guy. He brings all kinds of hip hop here. Yeah, shout out to the but, people locally who put on for, but for Montreal. Ricky D brought that fucking stupid ass white kid, Slim Jesus. Slim Jesus. This is things I don't agree with with promoters who are doing. Yeah, it's probably to put a like a couple pennies in like your pocket. Look, but you're literally bringing trash. Yeah, but and you're what? Don't what, like. What's it please sold don't out? bring a kid like Matt Ox here. Was like, it sold out? Probably, but that's what you got to give the people what they want. It's I don't agree trash. with it. That's trash. the thing. Promoters, promoters you should have some some integrity. Like, that's what you have to that. understand, DJ. Promoters what, like, aren't like uh, promoters. Don't to be honest, get to just choose their taste, right? It's say, what the people like, want. You're right. Maybe you know. Maybe my opinion it. doesn't matter because I'm not an artist. It doesn't matter if no, like, shows, you have but, an opinion though. But that's fine. as if I were an artist, if I were like an artist and you have a promoter who goes and like brings like Mo's Def and all this shit and then brings Slim fucking Jesus, you know, and he's promoting the shit of Slim Jesus and then you get a show like Ab Soul who no one fucking promotes it and then the guy barely sells like half the fucking place. Mm -hmm. That's fucking bullshit. Super you're bullshit. not doing your job as a promoter by like you're letting all these good artists slip through your fingers. And you're sp when you could spend, you spend five thousand dollars on a guy like Slim Jesus to come. When you could keep that five thousand dollars, are you serious? You That's how put, much it costs. Well, uh, just in general, I'm I like believe it. I number. believe it. Though. Well, you could keep that five thousand dollars, and then instead, in two months, add that five thousand dollars to the fifteen thousand you're already gonna bring for another artist, and bring a bigger artist. But you have to realize this at the same time. You know the I mean? reason, for instance, with Slim Jesus, the reason why Ricky D went like crazy pr promo for that shit. The reason why he promoted that like crazy because at the time when he was bringing Slim Jesus to Montreal for a concert, Slim Jesus was was riding the wave of his biggest viral hit, right? So if you have an artist you know you're going to bring to town and they have a they have a serious hit in motion at the time, you have to plaster that everywhere in people's faces. You have to. It's at the end of the day, it's securing his own bag. You know what I mean? If it's you're gonna promote any artist you you, yeah. you would bring because a promoter's job is to make sure you get the best turnip. But when it's someone who's uh, such a viral sensation, I think sensation, that's a farmer's job to get the best turnip. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. I'm kidding. I just think Slim Jesus has a slim penis and. But that guy's already like, faded off. That guy's man. definitely was. I've never even fucking heard. But of that him. guy was getting was him, that kid that, was like, getting himself in some serious shit because. He was talking about, uh, he was making what they call drill music, which is a very uh, real depiction of like crazy shit that happens in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of artists from Chicago who were telling him like, you are, you are disrespecting on a whole other level by pretty much glorifying murder. When yeah. we really go through that we shit, need, you know what I mean though? We need so, more people like the guy who punched XX Tenation or whatever his fucking name is. Uh, what was we it, need more uh, people like that. What was his name? Like just to punch guy. these Stone. stupid Rob Stone, ass. Yeah. What do you mean though? Shout out to Rob Stone. We need <laughs> you just need like that, that, that one guy who just knocks face on But that's the thing. You, you, Honest to God. But you have to also, have you listened to an X record? You have to You have to digest oh, yes, that music yes, first. I, I do you have to digest more than just one record. There, 
I'm digesting no more auto tune shit, and I'm not saying auto L auto tune is shit. No, I love. You have to use some, it in a right. This in is the it, right way. and people aren't using it in a right way. People are literally some people are flowing the exact same flow. It's constantly the same fucking song, man. It's the same fucking song, over well, and over and over. Every fucking artist has been coming out, man. I could, you know what? Next podcast you guys do, I will literally do my fucking research, and I'm gonna bring up a like. A stupid amount of clips mm-hmm. of just different songs and where's like show me what differences there are you know what I mean like honestly yeah, there's definitely God. a lot well, of let, well let's talk shit. about someone there's like Travis Scott though shit. I know like I, I wouldn't say like DJ is a big fan but I am a huge fan <laughs> recording <laughs> artist I, I think I, like I think, I think the really way good. that he uses his like auto-tune I think the way that he uses recording as like a, an instrument and he and he makes his voice sound so different not just using autotune but like just like the sound effects and all that stuff i would have to say like personally i think that travis scott is the best i think he's rap really recording produced. artist right now I, yeah that's what i'm saying recording yeah, recording overly, wise. That, he's overly produced though. yes overly produced but when you want something to sound a certain way that's kind of important you, you produce he- yourself like like you, you make your voice into an instrument i'm like a fan of well, like his problem is I'm a fan of like old school hip hop very Definitely, much so too sure. and like I like Travis Scott in a lot of songs yeah. a lot of songs but I just can't listen to a full album of him I can't listen to a full album of like ad libs and all this shit yeah. you know I can't do it but do you at, at least all. understand why it's big like do you I understand, understand why it's because big because it's one yeah, thing to not be a fan but I like for me I'm not a fan of all of it but yeah, I get either. why it's popping take the beat away and give him a fucking like I've actually regular heard ass hip hop beat. I've heard I've heard that yeah. his full full acapella of Amido, and it's actually amazing. Like you can see, like he you know what's amazing. He treats his voice like Amido. an instrument. No, but he treats his voice like an instrument, and that's like that's something that not many people give a fuck about. I can't be so like, like that. Look, shit, though. look, think about all the artists that like when they perform live, they're just doing like a backtrack and that's it. Tell me Travis Scott does that. I don't think he does. No, like, no he's full on with his... God, he's like, crazy, with man. His like, if, vocals. if you put Travis Scott, Future... Yeah. Okay, but Future is like really no. bad, though. Is like, he, though? Yeah. yeah. Go talk to a Future fan. I fuck right with now, future. you're a Travis Scott Honestly, fan. Honestly, I, I fuck I with understand. Future. So I it's understand. like, it's the same situation. No, but I'm saying like... like anybody really listening, I, I am with this shit. I fuck with Future. He's he's the plug. No, I don't he's think Future is bad. I feel, I feel like his he uses is auto tune. Future, like, like Travis level. Scott, um, Young Thug, Migos. You put all these guys on one track. Say you put them on a track like uh, what was that fucking song with like Action Bronson and Kendrick and One, one train. train. Yeah, One Train. Put them on a track Jake like One Train, right? right? Just all of them, like a One Train song, like them. Yeah. You are gonna. I I guarantee the a. Uh, any person who hasn't just listened to a full album of like Future by itself, or a few album, full album of Migos, or full album of Travis Scott, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to be, tell the difference of the transitions of them rapping, and with especially if they were all to their capacity, like produced, overproduced, like the way they are. Well, let's talk about all- designer who sounds exactly yeah, like trash Future. again. Like- that guy is so bad, like. But like I mean like I guess like it's all about opinion in the but end, right? Like that's who, all it's gonna be at the, the end fuck, of the day. The Music is opinion, what's right? But I, f- I find like I find Travis Scott actually puts a lot of effort into his recordings, and that's what people really listen to. You go to a live show to see the artist. You go to a live show to see their energy. But when it comes down to it, what are you listening to ninety percent of the time? Their recordings. But you know what? Like, 50% of, of rap fans want bars and 50% want vibes. Yeah. That's it. And that's, what, that's, that's why, the best way that's to why I do like Travis Scott because I find, like, I find his vibes, like from what I see from his live shows and stuff, he's next level. Like He really like he treats what it like I a rock concert say, though, and nobody does it anymore. What so I would love to that's say, what I say is like this, gener- like this generation is exactly the same as the last and the last and the last. It was, it was crooner music. It was... Like your your parents at that time, but they don't even say words. You get yeah. go down to the future, and it's like hardcore music, <laughs> but they don't even say words. Yeah. You get to mumble rap. You get to like all this auto tune, like <laughs> <laughs> they literally don't even. But they say don't words. even say <laughs> words. And you know what? There's always they're never gonna say words. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's all like if you don't read the lyrics sometimes, you don't hear it. If you don't listen to that music all the time, you don't hear what they say. 
once you start listening to that music, it's true. When and you, you listen to it. like ten Travis Scott songs, you know everything he says mm-hmm. in all his other songs. Yeah. You listen to ten Future songs, you know everything he says in all his other songs. And now you're finally like, oh my god, I've unlocked the key to the song. Like, you know, it finally makes sense. Drake's oh. verse isn't stupid anymore. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, no, that's super uh, fair. Bro. But like, it's fair. always been like that, and it's always going right, to be like um, that with all kinds of. Music. I think we should wrap it up now. Yeah, because we got it. Well, no, we got we got a few more minutes. We're at here. fifty-five minutes, so I will say this. Um, Shout out to everyone who's listened to our first podcast from the small views that we do have. We know we're going to be building over time with you guys. Uh, We're going to be bringing you other videos too as we get rolling. So you're going to see a lot of cool shit happening soon. Uh, This will probably be the last podcast with just audio. So we're working hard to get video going for you guys. We'll see though. We might have like one more. uh, But we're working hard to, to try to bring it to the video for the next one. Um, One thing that's important that uh, like, I would like you guys to, to comment what you guys would like us to talk about because like we think about a million things but what's interesting yeah comment some questions and just things you want us to touch up on also for this one in specific uh comment in the uh in the the comment section below about what you thought about the matt ox video so go check that video for yourself and drop your own little opinion on that do not check that video do not give this man any more views you're you're adding don't listen to to dj the fucking troll (laughs) okay but honestly but but that's why we got dj on this podcast he is a troll and we love that he's a troll (laughs) you know why we got dj on conversation for sure you know why we got dj on here because he's exactly like he thinks of music very differently than a lot of the people that that we talk to you know and that's why he's interesting plus he has really good house parties you guys should check those out too um, so, uh, c- can I do the outro music? I would like that. So, yeah, sure. I will say this before the Just outro don't music go too cues. High. No. <laughs> so, this is the Strathy Boys Podcast 2. Make sure you give us a follow on SoundCloud. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all our socials. A- Everything A-A-A. at the Strathy Boys, except our Twitter is at Strathy Boys because I couldn't fit it all into the fucking handle. Thank you for listening, and soon you'll be watching. We love you. Have your pet spayed or neutered. Oh. oh. Yo, actually, that reminds me of something, though. Maybe we have a little bit of time. I went to see this weird aboriginal concert by accident. I was just walking by, and I started watching. And they were like, I need a seal to feed, to feed my family's meal. That's, it was the weirdest shit I've ever on, seen. Hold on, sorry to cut you off. Were you, like, were, were you doing, like, that, like that a, song with Snoop Dogg and Pharrell? Yeah. Oh, okay, I, was that's, like, I thought it was, like, some sort of, like, aboriginal also, thing. Also, super racist to say on Canada. Don't care. Love you, but don't care. <laughs> I thought it was the weirdest song ever. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. All right. I guess All right. That's it. Signing off. This is the Strathy Boys. See you next week. And the Douglar. <laughs>